So can your copper cable get terabits in speed? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe NBA needs to get this together and give us fiber. But enough wishful thinking. In today's video, I want to discuss a certain doctor. You may be wondering, Doctor Who? But in fact, it's not Doctor Who, it is Dr. John Sioffi. So, over the next few weeks, I'll be bringing you some interesting videos on networking from around the world. And so, if you like this video, then make sure to tap that like button. And if you'd like to see more, then hit the subscribe button to get notified. Let's load the intro. Let's roll the intro. A name you should all remember as you pirate your favorite movies. So who is John Matthew Xioffi? Well, today he is 63 and he is an American electrical engineer, educator, inventor who has made contributions in telecommunication system theory, specifically in coding theory and information theory. But he is best known as the father of DSL. Sioffi's pioneering research was instrumental in making digital subscriber line technology practical and has led to over 400 publications. You see, in 1984, Sioffi left Bell Labs to work at IBM as a hard disk drive read channel researcher. Then in 1986, Sioffi began his teaching career as an assistant professor of electrical engineering in Stanford University. Then Sioffi supervised the PhD programs of more than 70 students over the course of more than two decades. His and his students' research into discrete multi-tone modulation became widely adopted in digital subscriber line DSL technology, used commonly for you guessed it, internet access. So in 1991, at the age of 35, Sioffi took a leave of absence from Stanford to found Amati Communication Corporation. His vision was to build DSL modems based on his and his students' research. Many of Sioffi's then current and former students followed him to Amati, where they built the Prelude modem, a DSL modem that could transmit six megabits per second over 2,743 meters of telephone line. The Prelude modem would go on to win what was become known as the Belcore ADSL Olympics in 1993 by performing significantly better than modems using single carrier modulation techniques such as quadrat amplitude modulation and carryless amplitude based modulation including modems that AT&T and Belcore had been using. Hundreds of millions of people around the world use DSL based on Sioffi's innovations. And so we arrive today where Dr. Sioffi could again change the world of DSL. Now I know many people want fiber and today's topic will ignore that fact since our country's NBN seems to be unwilling to just do that. This is the other option. Dr. Sioffi has offered a solution to the copper line problem of slow speeds. So you are aware of DSL, then you know about ADSL and you know fiber to node uses VDSL. Now Dr. Sioffi wants you to get to know TDSL, terabit DSL. So what is TDSL? Well, at present, modern fiber to node and or curb style broadband technologies like GFAST can harness 106 megahertz of spectrum, which will go up to 212 in the near future. They tend to deliver their best speeds at under a few hundred meters from your local street node with electrical signals traveling inside the copper wire. Future enhancements like XG Fast and XG Mega Fast may even be able to use up to 848 megahertz of spectrum. But these will suffer even more from signal degradation over a distance, meaning you will need a very short line in order to get the best performance. And some doubt that due to today's increasingly fiber-centric wants from the public, it would never come to fruition. But TDSL proposes a radically different approach of using existing copper wire as a waveguide to help direct wireless broadband signals in the 100 gigahertz millimeter wave band which could carry huge amounts of data. It would be like running 5G via copper cables rather than air. One early model predicts that speeds of 100 gigabits per second could be achieved at distances of over 300 meters compared to future GFAST upgrades that might only deliver 500 megabits at these distances. Well, 10 gigabits might even work at distances over 500 meters and even those on longer lines such as 700 meters could potentially achieve symmetrical speeds of around 1 gigabit per second. You see, the current limitation of millimeter wave is the amount of nodes or 5G towers you need to cover a vast area. So the fact that such speeds could be achievable without needing to replace existing copper cables with expensive full fiber infrastructure is a significant incentive for NBN to explore this approach. 
but I doubt they would, even with the looming 5G threat. Early designs suggest that link latency of 50 to 100 microseconds is readily achievable, which would easily allow even the most stringent 5G latency specifications of 1ms or less be achievable with those terabit DSL. Here is what Cioffi said at an event in Paris a few years ago. I don't expect anyone to need terabits to their home anytime soon. Terabits will be most valuable to data centers controlled by phone companies as well as to internet companies such as Google and Microsoft. While terabits demand may be a few years into the future, 10 to 100 gigabits a second are important to networks today and will be a big market. So rapid advances in Internet of Things, including autonomous vehicles, means the number of unconnected devices requiring high-speed, ubiquitous connectivity will increase dramatically in the next decade. They actually believe that terabit DSL will play a crucial role in serving the needs of that ecosystem with ultra-high throughput and ultra-low latency connectivity for things like 5G nodes. Unfortunately, at present, TDSL is just a theory model, and on top of that, there's a question mark over the real-world viability of using millimeter wave spectrum in such a way, which is a band that can be easily disrupted. Such signals usually don't travel very far without a dense, powerful network to keep them stable. On the other hand, back in the days of 14 kilobits dial-up modems, few could have ever envisaged that a 1 gigabits capable copper technology like GFAST might ever exist. This could be us today, and that could be tomorrow. The dream is that one terabit could be achieved at 100 meters, then 100 gigabits at 300 meters, and finally 10 gigabits at 500 meters. And even then, at 1000 meters, we could see better speeds than anything we have today. After all, fiber is and always will be expensive to deploy. There are billions of phone lines around the world which now will be able to deliver fiber-like speeds over their existing copper infrastructure. Using the existing wires in place can dramatically reduce the cost of 5G networks, so overall it's kind of like a win-win. To summarize, I would like to add that building a fiber network while expensive is still a surefire way to solve this problem. But sometimes, building these fantastical systems can lead to much more innovation than just spending immense amounts of money on a problem that you know will solve it. Sometimes having a problem and cost being the issue can create some great technologies. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tech talk. Make sure to like if you did and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in another video. Bye.